Eiji Kaminaga on the school toys. Today I'm in the uh, collection room of the world famous tin toy collector and the presenter of uh, the antique toy uh, collectors of the Mark Inc. Let me introduce uh, Mr. Uh, William Gallagher. Thank you very much, Kaminaga-san, and welcome to our home. Hello, Bill-san. Thank you for inviting me here. I'm so excited about uh, looking at your huge collection. Sometimes it does seem overwhelming, but uh, it, it is all in our home, so we, we enjoy it. Especially, I like to see your uh, Marasan's collection. Well, Marasan toys are scattered throughout the collection, so we would have to take a little tour to, to uh, see them individually. Good. So, uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, That's let's fine. start the tour. Okay. Very okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Bill-san. Uh, which one is Marasan's product? Well, if you look over here in this cabinet, you see at the top the characters that I have talking to each other. And the mm -hmm. right side are, is a talking donkey and a donkey, mm -hmm. talking elephant. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Bring them down. What's unusual about these, you've seen the pipe smoking elephant made by Marasan mm -hmm. and the pipe smoking donkey mm -hmm. made by Marasan. Mm -hmm. But these are not battery operated, they're actually a wind up toy. Mm -hmm. So if you sit down and Put these, watch these two characters, and they actually look like politicians because in the United States, the Democratic Party is represented by a donkey and the Republican Party by an elephant. So it sounds like they're having a great political discussion. But they are a wind up toy as opposed to the typical battery operated pipe smoking toys of Marasan. I see. In this room, which I consider my general uh, display room. You'll see a Marasan locomotive, one that goes down, turns around, goes back together. Uh, Marasan made several variations of that toy. But I have it currently displayed here amongst my trains. Over in this case uh, is a collection of amusement park toys and down here at, in the lower level is a is a, a toy called Dreamland, and it is a wind-up uh, Marasan toy with the bus winding up and going on the track, going back down, picking up the track again. And the Dreamland is Dream Marasan, Marasan, right? Marasan. In this cabinet uh, is is. Mostly automotive or, or vehicles. Uh, uh, I, I have to point out first the famous 1957 Marasan Cadillacs. <laughs> uh, there was one of each color, and that was a wonderful uh, experience to work with you in, in distributing those toys uh, outside of outside of Japan. On the top here is uh, is uh, one of the 1952 Marasan Fords. This is a taxi version which has the special graphics on the side for a taxi, the taxi sign on top, and you even see the meter for the taxi inside. Typical yellow color, which we think of as the yellow taxi company. Look at table. Uh, yeah, the table is uh, just a collection of things that I that I've pulled out. The, Here's the same 1952 Ford in, in, a, in a police version. Uh, as you know, most of these were either friction or battery operated. Uh, this one has a siren to, to individuals inside. But what is really unique about this, this Ford is a, it is a wind-up version. And I think that is the only wind-up version of the, uh, of the 52 Ford that uh, Marasan did. But, Complete with sirens, so you feel like a real police car. Here's a here's a, a sample from the 1950s. It was is marked the uh, the comet it says Central on it, and it's got comet on the side. Just a one piece stamping, but it's, it's, it's a friction toy. And here's the same toy again with different uh, different uh, lithography on it, the Royal Streamliner. It's marked 1958, and you'll see it has a battery attached, and this one is, is, uh, is battery operated. There's another battery operated uh, train toy, 
Uh, I don't have batteries in it currently. It's a general. This would again it would be a late uh, late fifties, early early sixties type type toy. As you know, Marathon started with optical toys, uh, and this is probably one of the earlier examples of of little binoculars or field glass as as they were marketed. Here's the here's the box that that toy came in, and it's marked Marathon on the uh, on this side. Over here is a uh, probably what would would be a 1951 Cadillac, but not the same 51 Cadillac that was done by Kosage for Marasan. This this is something referred to as a stop and go car. Uh, it is battery operated, but it's you know clearly the Cadillac profile and Cadillac Cadillac Chrome. Uh, there's a battery in it. We'll see if we can make this operate. You see the car stop, the door opens, the passenger or the driver turns his, his direction towards the, the door, like he's going to exit the door, gets back in the car, and goes on down the road. So, kind of a fun little stop and go car as referred to. This is a, uh, uh, a Marathon sightseeing bus. What's unusual here, it's a friction toy. Uh, shows a luggage rack on top, but it has a rotating, so it's a triangular rotating uh, scenery on each side. So the idea is being as you're traveling around the country, you get different uh, different images and they capture these uh, with the tin lithography on the, on the side. Pretty unique. Here is a Marasan uh, pan panoramic overland bus. You see the second second deck and inside the tin lithographed uh, passengers on both the first level and the uh, second level. And this is a this is just a uh, uh, a regular uh, friction toy called the World Panoramic Overland Bus. Of course, Marathon made many. Many boats. Uh, here's one with uh, a lot of detail. Uh, United States uh, steamship here. You'll see the Marasan logo on, on the front. Uh, two smokestacks. Uh, this is a uh, uh, pretty well lithographed, uh, detailed lithographed toy you know, with additional additional parts on it. This is a as a wind up. The key uh, goes down through the the stack, and propeller will move. Now, I don't know if that was designed to go in water or not, but it uh, it certainly is a nice model of, of the boat. Our son did a number of submarines, as you know. Here's two: the SSN SSN7 and the SSN25, similar in their designs. Uh, these both are. Uh, 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 friction toys, where the crank winds the winds the prop in the back, and the lithography is very very similar. This one shows a plane on on the front of the submarine. Here's their number five seventy one. Uh, this one is a battery operated toy with the battery compartment being here under, underneath the uh, uh, this, cover, this cover here. So I think that was done in an attempt to keep that water, you know, somewhat waterproof as you put that in the water. And, uh, and some young child would play with that and enjoy it. Funny, this little pop pop boat. I think in Japan you say you called them pump on boats, but pop pop boat is written on the side where you uh, uh, put a little uh, smoking device in there and it just putters along on, on the pond or on the lake or in the bathtub. Another whole series of, of, of boats, many of them are. Armas on this is a really nice uh, uh, cabin cruiser. 
very clean. This is a this is a wind up. And see the color is moving. So. Again, that's in theory, uh, these could be used in the water. Yeah. Tin does rust over time, but uh, they were designed to be you know, put in the water and and, uh, and played with like a normal a normal toy. This Champion boat, number 2J, one of the speed boats with the full figured uh, uh, driver inside. This was a battery operated toy, it had a little cover over top of that. And it represents the uh, speed boat racing that took place on many uh, uh, rivers and, uh, and, and lakes. The several on that, in that, that similar design. Here's another uh, battery operated toy. This is number S35. See the similarities in the designs. This one uh, uh, is also uh, battery operated as is, is that one. Here is the same, the same boat uh, referred to as the Arrow, A35 Arrow, and you'll see instead of being battery operated, it has a it has a line motor. Now it's on motor. Maybe this toy will surprise you. I don't know if you recognize this one or not, but I'm not talking about. Marlson, because he's, he's very famous. But have you ever seen this uh, goose with a hat on? Wow. Carries the Mart, uh, Marlson logo, mm -hmm. and also the Kosage logo. Oh, uh, oh. So I see. that gives you an idea of how to date. A goose with a hat. Very clever design. Robbie on the tractor, or a bulldozer. This is Robert, robot bulldozer. Using the name Robbie, which was very popular for a robot. There's the Marasan uh, uh, logo on, on this toy. This is the fiction robot bulldozer. Uh, another interesting toy that you don't see very often is, is, is Marasan. This is a jousting knight. And there you find the Marasan logo stamped. This, this is, oh, this is a, a squeeze operated. So, oh. you know, on a smooth floor, you, you uh, squeeze the thing, the, uh, oh. the handles here, the Legs move, oh. and he gallops down down the road. It's a night jousting. Very colorful. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen. Uh, I can't think of any other Marathon toys I've seen with that with that uh, kind of uh, mechanism. box for this toy. It's called the National Child Windmill. Combination of tin and, uh, and, and celluloid. But uh, very cute toy. Musical. Nice sound. It is a good sound. Marasan made in Japan. with this box called the Child Clock. This is actually a, uh, uh, a bank, a little key where you can open this up. You can deposit your money in the side. So the bank collectors like this, but it is lined up. And as the, as the clock goes around, uh, I don't have a key with it. The uh, celluloid parrots move and the, the dial rotates uh, to, sell, to tell the time. So 
fun way to, for a child to save money and still be amused at the same time. Wind up to a little Marasan uh, elephant with a monkey on its trunk. Uh, it's a wind up toy, is it? It's, it's a walking toy. The trunk goes up and down, and, and the and the uh, the feet move. A castle. Uh, which one? Castle. Oh, oh yes, the castle banks. We have the whole series. For, uh, the pagoda banks, the castle banks. Uh, I, these were not sold in, in this country that I'm aware of, uh, but they, again, they're, they're, they're banks and desirable amongst the bank collectors. Each of these are Marasan. Very colorful. The top is a plastic. Very top, yes, it's, it's plastic. There's a slot for you to put money in the bank. See the coin slot? And then the key. Is, is Masadaya. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another toy similar to the, uh, the train I showed you earlier. This is this is an MG uh, wind-up toy where the, the vehicle it turns around, goes back, so it turns around each end. I have to put a key in there to demonstrate that for you, but we can. That toy is popular, I think, because it has an MG a car there, which is a favorite sports car for many people. And here's a little lucky sewing machine. Another wind up toy. A sailor girl back there, but you see the needles moving up and down. And the... This is a very wonderful Marasan fire engine. Uh, large toy. You know, it's, most of the toys were, were smaller. This is really good size with a uh, uh, probably Japanese type figures inside, but made to look like an American. American truck, uh, ice red hubcaps, moving flag, uh, extension ladder, bell, and this this is a this is a friction toy. See another uh, another Marasan 52 Ford, a uh, different configuration. This is a fire engine uh, with uh, lights and siren. This particular model is a battery operated model, but the same highly detailed car that this this was, but in the fire department uh, livery. So another Marasan toy here. A fireboat toy. Listed as the Fire Marine Department. You can see the figures on the side with their hoses. Yeah. And the Mars 
Sun logo here between the flag and the hose rail. Thank you very much for showing your collection, especially many, so many miles on collection. That's amazing. You're, you're very welcome. So, what do you think about you know, mostly Marasan's tin toys? I think you have to go back to producing toys, toys after the war. Uh, I grew up during the 1940s and 1950s, and uh, initially, you know, we, we asked the Japanese to make toys, mm -hmm. but our parents did not want us to buy Japanese toys <laughs> because they were, they were Japanese. Sure. So there was a reluctance to, to buy Japanese, but many of them flooded the market in the, in the dime stores, the, uh, the uh, catalog stores would have toys, uh, and you'd pick them up and say it would say made in Japan or made in occupied Japan. But they were, they were typically uh, uh, very often small toys like this, a lot of, a lot of very s small toys without a lot of detail. This one has, actually does have some detail, but usually small things like this. Later on, you know, they got to the point where they would add some chrome and make it a little bit more realistic, but, but they were somewhat non, nondescript. As a child, you're not thinking about a brand. You just want to buy, you want the toy to play with. And you look at that and say, oh, that's neat, I want to play with that toy. And maybe your parents didn't let you buy it initially because it was Japanese. But later on, as, as that sentiment uh, disappeared, we would go to the stores and, and, oh, this is really a neat toy, we'd buy it. But still, I don't think we were buying a brand. We were buying a toy to play with it. Mm. So we, we may not have noticed that it was made by Marasan or Masadaya or whoever the manufacturer might, might be. So my view is that the, the awareness of the manufacturer did not come until the collector started collecting it. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. When we're older now, because we come back and we want to recreate our mm -hmm. childhood, or we said, wait, we had a really neat toy back in 1955. And you, you go out and you buy it, and you see the people who collect tin toy cars or wind up toys. Uh, they start to amass a collection, and in doing so, you start to see the differences between the manufacturers and the detail, right? And some were very good at it and some not so much. Maybe they did, that, that wasn't the primary objective for them to have a highly detailed car. So little cars like this, you know, eventually got some chrome. Uh, they got a little bit bigger. Uh, still you don't see it's a Cadillac. You see a little bit of the Cadillac shape. This one had some chrome on the front, had white tires, not white wall mm -hmm. tires, but white tires. And here, look what we did. We put, we put windshield wipers on it. Mm -hmm. So it's a friction toy. When you, when you uh, run the wheels, the wipers go back and forth. So the details started to come more and more, I think, probably during the 19, 1950s. Mm -hmm. And as we look back and we think about it, the, you know, the 1951 Cadillac produced uh, by Kosuke for, for Marasan. Mm -hmm was probably the, one of the finest uh, tin toy cars ever produced because of the detail mm -hmm. that they included in, in the product. So this now attracts the collectors. Mm -hmm. And the collectors that grew up in the 40s maybe started driving in the 50s, mm -hmm. and their first car was a 1950s car or an early 1960s car. And they can go back down, they can find the, you know, the car they had maybe or their parents had as, as uh, when they were children. But, when you move on to what Marasan did here, and this is a 1952 Ford, and, and such a difference. I mean, this, the side trim, you know, door handles, side trim here, bumpers, the multiple uh, headlights, nice grill, the emblem on the, on the, uh, on the, on the hood, uh, the emblem on the front of the hood indicating the maker. Same thing in the back. So. Boy, look at this car. It's really, it's really an amazing car. Though. Who made this? So we find, oh, Marasan, son, son. Mm -hmm. So we learned that was Marasan mm -hmm. Toys, and I think uh, uh, from then on, you know, collectors really had an awareness of the high quality toys that were produced by Marasan. Of course, she went on to get into the Godzilla business, the, you know, <laughs> the monster business, and many people know Marasan for that reason also. But this. I think it was the, the quality of the car that 
bar sound really, really shine. You know, it, it, it made people recognize this is a nice model. You know, nice. It's it's a toy, but it, it's really well done. And we look on the bottom and see San. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as we got older, we learned this, that that is Marasan Company. So Marasan earned that reputation. I mean, people didn't pay attention to it, I don't think, until they became collectors. And once you become a collector, then you start. You're drawn to the best of the best, and. There, there's where I think Marsan really has, has made an impact on, on the toy collecting industry. I see. So, yes, you've been studying so many uh, old Japanese tin toys, but not only uh, you have a, a four, three, four, how many books you have? I, I've done five books now. For Japanese? So, yes, four on Japanese four toys. Four Japanese toys. Okay. Uh, but not only Japanese toys, but also your work is, your work is uh, Made in U.S. Oh, tin yes. toy. We, we, you do. We've done a U.S. company now, or companies now too. Mm -hmm. My first book was on toys made by Toplay, mm -hmm. and uh, again they had their attraction because of their whimsical nature. Mm -hmm. Mostly wind-up toys, mm -hmm. and they, they were just fun toys. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, you know Marasan made toys similar, mm -hmm. but Marasan made uh, mm -hmm. a lot of toys that were very realistic mm -hmm. that maybe mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, children would uh, play with, but. Mm -hmm. We moved to the area we're in now about 11 years ago, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we met somebody at a, an antique show who mm -hmm. saw that I had toys, and he had been studying uh, toys made in Dayton, Ohio, mm -hmm. for for quite some time. And uh, while I was aware of Dayton toys, uh, they were referred to as hill climbers. Mm -hmm. Well, but I would find a toy periodically, and I'd ask somebody, another collector, "What is this toy?" And they say, "Oh, it's that's a Dayton toy." And, uh, or it's a hill climber, but I could never get much detailed information mm -hmm. about it. So the challenge when I moved down here, when I met this individual who wanted me to study the Dayton toys, is learning the history of, of the evolution of mm -hmm. the Dayton toy market. Mm -hmm. And I was quite surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in this research, uh, we found close to 40 toy companies mm -hmm. that existed in Dayton, Ohio, mm -hmm. uh, between uh, late 1800s and, mm -hmm. and uh, the Depression. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the very first ones, uh, uh, the friction toys, as, as we refer to them now, they, they, uh, their patent for that toy was done in 1897. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be the first American patent for a mm -hmm. friction toy. Mm -hmm. and, and we think about friction toys today, and if you look at a friction toy from, this is about 1902 or 1903, uh, this toy is made out of, of wood and a th thin steel. Mm -hmm. You know, we, yeah. we might call it tin, but it's it's really closer mm -hmm. to a to a sheet steel. But the uh, the flywheel on the friction toy is huge. You know, it's it's cast iron, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of weight here. And the the patent uh, found out, you know, that, you know by getting this flywheel in motion, mm -hmm. he could transfer that energy from the flywheel to the to the wheels and create a car that somebody could push on the ground and let it go on it, let it go on its own. So I excuse me why I retrieved <laughs> the, the car. So this this was the, the birth of friction toys mm -hmm. in, uh, mm -hmm. in 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 America. Mm -hmm. So they, they have quite a history, but from this one company, uh, you know, they, they bring on partners and, and they split up and they start mm -hmm. another company. So we, I think there are maybe seven or eight mm -hmm. toy companies that evolved just from this design mm -hmm. and, and this patent. Uh, later on, you know, they got into, like primarily, I would call them steel toys more so than more, more so than tin, just because they're a heavier, mm -hmm. heavier gauge and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there were just a variety of, of things that were that were produced uh, in. Uh, you get into the twenties and thirties, and, and they were more like uh, I think more and more like mm -hmm. the real the real uh, thing. But when the depression hit uh, in the you know, early nineteen thirties, mm -hmm. uh, most of these companies failed. Oh. You know, the market just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And back then. Again, you're not aware of of the brand. Mm -hmm. You know, people weren't marketing a brand uh -huh. then. So if I find an old catalog uh, about friction toys, they'll just have a list. They call them friction toys. 
and you you'd have no idea who made that toy. Uh -huh. and one of my challenges in this was to try and decide between all these different friction toy companies who made what. And uh, I did that by researching patents and researching the individuals, you know, where they lived, what they did, oh, and I what see. you can find in in records, public records, to, to learn more about the history of those companies. Yeah, I, I was so surprised that I didn't know the, you know, uh, Made in U.S. and Tin Toy, you know, company was you know, uh, nine, early 1990. Yeah, this started in 18, 1897. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. mm -hmm. and, uh, like, you know, when I think about the Tin Toy made in U.S., reminded me like a uh, Louis Marx or yes, uh, right. that kind. But and, like, and I think you know they they, they, they became mm, the, the, the the people like that uh, the Marx toys, which were smaller and lighter, mm. and uh, and they started to do. One of these companies started to experimenting with lithographing their toys. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll find that they have a, you know, their grill has been lithographed on mm -hmm. it. So they did very little. It was mostly hand painted. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the the uh, the companies that started working like like Marks mm -hmm. with lighter weight tin, mm -hmm. uh, they eventually started lithographing mm -hmm. the tin, mm -hmm. and and uh, that that became a big market mm -hmm. for for many U.S. companies. Mm -hmm. But not so the Dayton company. Oh, yeah. Also, I'm surprised that made in U.S. tin toy in Dayton because I like uh, in uh, New York, New Jersey, you have the right. tin toy factory right. over there. I heard, but Dayton had. Uh, well, Dayton was a very industrial town. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some very famous things that happened here. Of course, mm -hmm. the Wright brothers mm -hmm. were, yes. with with their uh, first flight of this, mm -hmm. but. Uh, we talked about cash registers. National mm -hmm. Cash Register was here, oh, yes. mm -hmm. and uh, they they sold registers all mm -hmm. over the world. Mm -hmm. And very inventive company. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the president of that mm -hmm. company sought talent. He mm -hmm. sought people to come and work for him that would design things. And many of those people decided to leave mm -hmm. and go off and do something. And they got maybe in the mm -hmm. toy business. So mm -hmm. some of the people in the toy business used to work for mm -hmm. National Cash Register. But if you start. You know, the electric starter was 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 made in, mm -hmm. in Dayton. Started here, uh, and in the refrigeration, they made cars here. Uh, just, it was a very industrial city. They they say in in uh, in the nineteen fifties uh, that they were more or the early part of the century. I guess there were more patents in 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 Dayton per per person than any place else in, in the United States. So it was just a, an inventive town. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the the toy industry pretty much diminished uh, with the depression, and there were a few companies that that uh, made it into the forties and, and fifties. But we had two companies nearby that that closed in in two thousand, but they were not into the tin toy business; they were into other other types of toys. So. I see. Yeah, so many study about uh, old toys, yes. right? Yeah. Still yeah. Uh, looking for new uh, new subjects. Right. Well, I, I didn't start out with thinking about doing another book. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people ask you, are you going to do another book? Because you know, it, it takes a lot of time. Uh, but I enjoy it because mm -hmm. I learned so much. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I think even, you know, I, I probably wouldn't have met you had mm -hmm. I not started mm -hmm. doing a book on, mm -hmm. on tin toys. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I did that is I couldn't find any information mm -hmm. on the toys that I liked. Mm -hmm. And I started to research companies and, mm -hmm. and uh, one thing leads to another. So. And then we, you know, we met and, and had a really a good experience working together with the Marasan Cadillacs and, and even selling some of the kaiju gift over here in the United States. So. Also, your wife is a collector, of yes, toy, toy collector. Is. Well, she, we, you know, we do this together. Mm -hmm. She, uh, she likes. We go to toy shows together. Mm -hmm. We we sell together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I said it's an aging group, so there's mm -hmm. not there's not as many of the older toys available. If you go to a toy show today mm -hmm. in the United States, it's it's uh, very much character licensed toys mm -hmm. drive, drive the market. Mm -hmm. you know, young people are, are mm -hmm. doing this with their thumbs and they see the character toys mm -hmm. from the movies and the TV shows and that's what's, what's the most, uh, most popular. But she, but she finds things that she liked. Uh, uh, one of, the, one of the, her favorite collectibles was uh, Howdy Doody. Yes. <laughs> so you I'm very curious. I'm interested. Yeah. You should, you should talk to her uh, about... Uh, so, about can I see do. the her collection of the Howdy yes, Doody? Yes, that would be fine. Okay, let me let's, see. Let's do that. Okay. Hello, Mrs. Gilger. Can I see the, your collection of Howdy Doody? Yes, be happy to. 
Um, this is really an outgrowth of my childhood and the first TV that we acquired as a family. And Howdy Doody was on every day, every afternoon. One of the first uh, children's TV series that came out. So as an adult, I became interested in collecting Howdy Doody figures and pieces and toys. Um, if you look here in the case, you're going to see a variety of... Um, how smoke. about, could you explain the top of the tin toys? That's uh, okay. how do you do these toys? Okay, tin? this is a, a tin piece mm. that when you wound it up, mm -hmm. Howdy would dance mm -hmm. and Bob Smith would play the uh -huh. piano. Um, there was so many uh, pieces put out. Um, There's a mask over there. Yes, that would be for Halloween time. Oh. Um, you have toys that you could put in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. um, these glasses were part of uh, uh, the Welsh's jelly mm -hmm. line. Um, there was even a Christmas piece that would light up oh. that you would hang on the wall. Um, back here, perhaps we'd like to look at the uh, collection of marionettes. The marionettes that would have been on the TV show, uh, the various characters. Uh, many people do not know that Howdy Doody had a sister, Heidi. Oh, sister Heidi. This Heidi one. Doody. Uh, Heidi Doody. And, and the uh, clown? The clown was... Uh, uh, well, stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the clown on the Howdy Doody show was Clarabelle, a very popular figure. Oh. Uh, he doesn't speak of the TV. Uh, Clarabelle never spoke for the mm. entire filming of Howdy Doody until the very last show mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when he finally said goodbye kids. <laughs> Princess Summer, Fall, Winter, Spring, another popular figure. One of my favorites was Flub-a-Dub. He was a combination of several different creatures. This is also on the same show? Yes, he would have been part of the uh, oh. family of figures. Oh, I see. Oh, these are all... This, this gentleman was one of the grumpy, oh. uh, kind of unhappy figures. His name was Mr. Bluster. <laughs> and Dilly Dally was a very gentle, uh, friendly little boy. And how about this monkey? Zippy, uh, oh, did, Zippy did not appear too often, mm -hmm. and he is the most uh, difficult figure to find oh, in the collection. I see. You had a lot of food-related products that were advertised on the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these mar marionettes, which ones are most expensive in the collector's market? Um, probably I would say uh, Mr. Bluster. Oh, this, Mr. this one? Because you wouldn't find him as often. Oh, I see. Okay. Can I see this side? Uh, yes. How do you do the lunchbox? How do you do the lunchboxes? Lunchbox. were very oh. popular. Oh, I see. Uh, although these two are a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. I don't have the older one. Uh -huh. There are also... Um, magazines put out that oh. had, would have Howdy Doody figures on. Mm -hmm. You would have Howdy Doody keychains, mm -hmm. variety of puppets, um, uh, things for sand toys, mm -hmm. bubble pipes, oh. you would have games. The Doody show resulted in a lot of uh, marketing of toys which was fairly new for that time but it just provided the vehicle for so many different toys to be produced and introduced to children. Okay, thank you so much. By the way, uh, I know you have made so many how to do the goods. Uh, what's the most your favorite one? Okay, I would probably say the, the Christmas piece, Christmas just because piece. it was so unusual. Now that oh. would that would light up. Oh, I You'd see. Plug it in the wall and it would light up. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>
Hi folks, I'm Eiji Kaminaga of Russian Toys. Today I'm in the collector's room. Sorry, collection room. <laughs> Hi folks, I'm Eiji Kaminaga of Russian Toys. Today I'm in the uh, collection room of the world famous Tinted Collector and the presenter of the anti collector's. Uh, <laughs> 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 Antique, to antique toy collectors. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I should put it. Sorry. Sorry. Hi, folks. I'm Eiji Kaminaga of Russian Toys. I <laughs> usually have fun doing this, so it's okay. It's good. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> We tried that one we did it one time and uh, couldn't couldn't stop laughing. So, uh, <laughs> and then you show it on your finger. Yeah. Okay. I got I'm not I'm okay now. Oh yeah, that's that's good. That's 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 a good idea. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Hi folks, I'm Eiji Kaminaga of Russian Toys. Today I'm in the uh, collector. <coughs> okay, sorry. <coughs> Hi folks, I'm Eiji Kaminaga of Russian Toys. Today I'm in the uh, collection room of the world famous Tin Toy Collector and the presenter of the America. Uh, America. <coughs> That's a that's a hard name. I should what what uh, I can get you a bigger cute card. It's okay. One, it's okay. Hi folks, I'm Edge Capitano. I'm a toys. <laughs> 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 